Hi there. Today I want to discuss something called as ionization energy, which is one of a very important topic in the AS level chemistry syllabus 9701. It's also a very popular topic in other syllabuses as well. Well, if you look at the definition of ionization energy, this is with respect to the topic of atomic structure. Now, as far as the definition goes, is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in gaseous state. Now, this definition actually has been asked once for three marks in the AS level examinations. And that's where the three marks were, the one mole of electrons, one mole of atoms, and in gaseous state. Usual mistakes made by the students, uh, sometimes they come up with definitions where they say, it's the energy required to remove one electron from one atom. So that's that part of the definition is not correct. Okay, so make sure that you learn the correct definition. Now, as per the definition, you may be asked to write equations to represent the ionization energy. For example, if you get a question to represent um, ionization energy 1 for sodium. Now, what that means is, as per the definition, I need to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of sodium atoms in gaseous state. So, what that means is, I need to take sodium atom in gaseous state. And I need to convert this into Na plus gas because that's what I get if I remove one electron from one sodium atom. Now keep in mind we are actually going to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of sodium atoms in gaseous state. So that's basically why we get this kind of equation. So these equations are usually worth two marks in the examination. One mark for the equation and one mark for the correct physical state. That's usually what students keep missing every time. Now, if the question comes something like uh, to represent um, third ionization energy for sodium, which means I need to remove the third set of uh, electrons from sodium atom. Now, what that means is I have to understand that the initial two moles of electron has already been removed, which means I will be starting with Na plus 2 in gaseous state. And I'm going to remove its third set of electron. And that's why I get Na plus 3 in gaseous state. And that's the mole of electrons. So even, even you might get questions in, in terms of, for example, if a question comes, show ionization energy 5 for chlorine. So once again, it, it means that you're removing the fifth mole of electrons from chlorine. So that means chlorine already has a plus 4 charge at that moment. And you're going to remove another mole of electron so it becomes chlorine with plus five charge and that's the mole of electrons so that's basically how to write ionization energy equations now if you, if you look at some typical questions of ionization energy <coughs> for example if you, if you look at the ionization energy trend um, if you go from an ionization energy trend going from from period 3 from left to right. Now, if you have your data booklet with you, you could figure out some kind of a, a graph which will explain you how this trend changes as you go from sodium to argon. And let's say you have ionization energy on your y-axis and you have all the period 3 elements here. So, if you look at your data booklet, I want you to compare the ionization energy one for every element starting from sodium to magnesium and then to aluminium and silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon in that order so if you just look at your data booklet um, let's say um, i'll give you a start let's say this dot represents sodium's ionization energy so if that is sodium now all you have to do is compare with the data booklet the first ionization energy of magnesium and you will find that the magnesium's ionization energy is a bit higher so I'm going to put the dot here so that's magnesium there um, so it's gone up a bit and now when I compare aluminium's ionization energy I find that the aluminium's ionization energy is less than magnesium but it's a bit more than sodium so which means the dot for aluminium should be somewhere here so that's the aluminium's ionization energy and when I go for silicon I'll find that the silicon's energy is more than any of these three so I'm going to mark the silicon somewhere here. So that's silicon there. 
And moving on to silicon to phosphorus, I find that the ionization energy still increases. So I got the phosphorus somewhere here. But comparing with sulfur, I find that the ionization is not too far off. It's a slight decrease in the ionization there. So that's sulfur there. And then moving from sulfur to chlorine, I still see an increase in the ionization energy. And for argon, it goes all the way high. That's a typical trend that I see when I go from sodium to argon. Of course, you, if you find that clearly there is some kind of a uh, abnormality here, there is definitely this part. You see there is some kind of abnormality here, there is abnormality here. But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to disregard those, those abnormalities. Of course, it has its own reasons why it's doing that. But if you want to understand generally what happens when you go left to right. So generally, as you see, the ionization energies increase. So, so generally, the ionization energies increases when you go from left to right. So which means you need to obviously work out some kind of a reasons as to, to justify this particular thing which is happening. So what you could do is, if you look at your data booklet, you will have, um, you, you could find a few things which could help you to understand this trend. So the first thing what you could do, uh, because if you want to justify this particular reason as to why this is happening, why from sodium to argon there is a general increase in the ionization. First of all, you could have a look at the, the number of protons. The number of protons, which is actually the atomic number, of the of the elements clearly number of proton is increasing from left to right and you, you understand that if the number of proton increases the nuclear attraction is going to increase and that was that will definitely cause an increase in the ionization energy and, and the other factor what you could think of is the is the atomic size the atomic size or the atomic radius uh, well, it increases from from sodium to chlorine. There is there is an abnormal increase in the size of argon because of its stable shell. But from sodium to chlorine, there's definitely an uh, sorry, my bad. Uh, sorry, uh, it, its atomic size decreases, not increases. So the atomic size is decreasing from sodium to chlorine. And um, that obviously also means the, the, the electrons are coming more closer to the nucleus. Uh, and because the proton numbers are increasing, that means those electrons are going to be pulled in more tightly and it will be more difficult for us to remove the electrons. And then if you look at the concept called shielding effect. Now, shielding effect or screening effect depends on the number of subshells. Now, what you will notice if you write everyone's electron distribution, that the, the number of subshells, of course, there's a change in the number of subshells here between magnesium and aluminium. And that's one of the reasons why this is happening. But generally, when you go from sodium to argon, since you're in the same period, period number three, there is no significant increase in the number of subshells, which means the shielding effect remains the same. So the shielding effect is fairly constant. And that's because you are in same period number three. So shielding effect is not changing much. So because of these three reasons, you find this a general increase in the, sheet, the ionization energy when you go from left to right. And a uh, similar explanation could be, of course, uh, you know, if you look, if you look at uh, a trend in group, uh, for example, if you look at the ionization energy trend, ionization energy trend going down um, going down a group let's say this could be group one group two any 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 group really it, it doesn't matter uh, you will find that if you look at group one for example or group four for example you could take any group for your reference and if, if you again try to sketch the ionization energy trend uh, let's say i've taken group one so i, I got lithium and then i have sodium and potassium and rubidium and francine and so on. Uh, what I will notice is lithium, as I go from lithium to sodium and to potassium, I'll find that the lithium's ionization energy one is very high. And if I compare with sodium, I'll, I'll see this in decrease. Please have a look at the data booklet, uh, ionization energy one for all these elements. You will clearly see there's a decrease in ionization energy as you go down. You probably your data booklet will not have all everyone's value, but that's okay. But at least you've got a trend. 
<coughs> moving from lithium to potassium so you get an idea that it's going down so uh, what do you think could be the reason then i mean uh, then you must also to understand the reasons behind this particular change you have to look at what's happening from lithium to francium as you go down so what we notice is the ionization energy decreases uh, going down going down a group and then of course we need we need to work out what could be the possible reasons as to why this happens to understand the reasons uh, we must have a look at what's happening from lithium to uh, rubidium and francium one of the things what you will notice is the that the number of shells number of shells um, subsequently sub shells is increasing so number of shells and sub shells are increasing now remember if there are more sub shells and shells increasing the concept of shielding effect you might remember uh, so shielding effect increases so that means the, the valence electrons are shielded much more from the nuclear attraction because of these so because of these two factors we do understand that the ionization energy will decrease um, so these two factors will definitely contribute in ionization energy going down um, you could also talk in terms of the atomic size um, increases uh, because number of shells and subshells increase so does the size so all these three factors uh, contribute in the um, decrease in the ionization energy but then there is one particular factor which is quite interesting the number of protons actually increases as you go down now you might remember if number of proton increases its effect on the nuclear attraction is that nuclear attraction actually increases and if nuclear attraction increases it means the ionization energy should increase because of that but if you look at the trend we clearly see that the ionization energies are decreasing it means this particular factor has been overcome or cancelled by three these factors there so that's the that's why this this was i remember i think this was a four mark question in one of the old as exams and most of the students couldn't score the fourth mark because of uh, this comment was not mentioned so uh, clearly you should mention a comment that the the increase in the nuclear attraction caused by the increase in the number of proton is actually overcome by the increase in the number of shells, subshells, shielding effect, and the size. So this, these three factors, they overcome or they cancel the, the impact of the increase in the proton. And that's why we see there's a decrease in the ionization energy. Well, um, that's basically um, what, which I wanted to discuss about ionization. I hope you have some idea about the reasons for the trend going from left to right uh, and the trend going from top to bottom in any group. Uh, don't forget the, how to write the correct ionization energy equations with the correct physical states. Uh, it's important that you mention the physical states very clearly because if you look at the definition, that's the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of atoms in gaseous state. We have also seen questions sometimes define the second ionization energy. Well, that would be energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of um, you know single positive gas ions. So similarly likewise questions could be created regarding the definitions well i hope you found the video useful it was a small little video just to give you basics of ionization energy um, i hope to make more videos for the atomic structure and other lessons of the as chemistry if you, if you like the video don't forget to subscribe it and share it among your friends um, and um, well, till then we'll see you again